Hello everybody, I am Duff and welcome to another very special Ultimate Golf VIP Tournament. These are a fun chance for you guys to play alongside some fellow players, some game developers, and even a celebrity or two. We throw some missions at you along the way. As you complete those missions, you are rewarded with some fantastic prizes. Now today's guest, a little bit of a celebrity. He's been a pro golfer in the past. He's been on the hit game show on TV, holy moly. He was even on the major hit Master Chef. He's even got his own podcast. We are joined today by Francis Biotti, Coach Frankie. Welcome to your VIP tournament, man. Thanks, Joey. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. I, I've been looking forward to this all week. It's not often you are our first like pro golfer to actually come on and play a tournament, so I'm looking forward to this. Now, Coach Frankie, we have gone ahead and selected Chateau Whistler here for you. You can go ahead, tee off at will. I will fill the people in on why we picked Whistler. We know that back in 2020, I saw you had a little trip out Whistler way, but it was in January and it was in the winter, which means you probably didn't get a chance to golf. So we wanted to give you a chance to see some of Canada's, uh, one of Canada's premier courses here at Chateau Whistler. So here you go. You get a chance to see what it looks like. Well, I appreciate that. And I don't have to pay the, uh, the green fee too. So this is a, great, a great way to get into it. Absolutely. I understand <laughs> something special, something special might've happened on that Whistler trip as well. Yeah. That's, that's where, uh, I proposed to my wife and thankfully she said yes. And, uh, and yeah, it was just a magical moment. It was literally the first, the first like real like snow of the year, and it was coming down, and it was beautiful. We were right outside our hotel, and uh, my wife worked for the Four Seasons at the time. So some of the perks of working for places like that is you get some nights. So we were able to, which is hardly ever uh, available, be able to get a couple nights out there at the at the Four Seasons out in Whistler, and. Um, I mean, Whistler is a special place. Joey, you know about Whistler. Whistler is beautiful. Oh, absolutely. It's absolutely fantastic. Let's see you line up your shot here. Oh, here we go. He's ready to hit his approach shot. I'm, I'm just hoping my my skills come to fruition here playing playing virtual golf. Not bad, hey? We're on the green and two. So, not bad at all. So I will. The first little tip I'll give you is generally okay. go into that spin, add some back spin on every shot. Okay. And then hopefully okay. we'll get you landing a little bit closer. But yeah, here you go on hole one. You got a little eagle putt here, a little tester. See if you can start minus oh. two after one. I think this is going in, guys. I I think you got it. All hey, right. Look at here this. We go. Minus Who's two after one, Coach Frankie. Here at Chateau Whistler. Now, Francis, Francis, Frankie, what do they call you? What do your friends call you? Are you a Francis? Are you Frankie? What are you? Yeah, a lot of times it's Francis. You know, sometimes in special occasions, Frankie will come out. Let's go, let's go, Frankie today. I'm having fun. All right, we're going. Frankie. I like it. Let's yeah. do it. And you see here, you went Frankie three wood with the name. Clever. I like it. So you're journey through golf. I know you played a lot uh, growing up in that, and then you ended up. So you're from the Orlando area, correct? And I know Orlando's got a lot of uh, like mini tour opportunities and a lot of little tours and stuff. Uh, why don't you tell us a That's little bit sure. about your time playing in Orlando? Maybe a little bit of, you saw some Q school action, did you? Or is the preparedness yeah, so for it? And that's and that's what you see there, uh, especially when they had one of the stages of Q School. Um, if the, the, for the viewers, listeners who don't know, Q School is the way, the path to get on tour. And back in the day, you could actually qualify for straight straight up the PGA Tour. So they're now qualifying for the second tier tour, which is uh, you know the Corn Ferry Tour now. Um, so that Orlando was the spot. It was like the breeding grounds where all of the best players in the world would come to train and get with their coaches and in the late 90s especially I mean, tiger woods was out there like you know just to name one notable guy all all the great players would be out there at bay hill or um lake nona isleworth uh, i think bubba ended up buying tiger woods's house after uh -oh. he left after his incident and uh so funny enough i was at a i was an olive oil and like just like a special olive oil shop right they had a fridge they bought someone said they bought from tiger woods house it literally looked like a golf club was smacked on the side of the fridge I'm really <laughs> not joking it looked like the imprint of a golf club i'd believe it anyway yeah yeah had some good times in orlando 
That's super cool. All right, throw some backspin on here for you. Bottom left, yeah, hit gonna... that ball, throw some backspin on there. Just like the real world. Let's do it. I promise you, these ones, they're like, uh, you know those illegal grooved wedges that uh, you can back it up like 40 feet? Look at this! Oh! Hey. That's how much backspin you can apply to these ones. Hey, so, after, after Orlando... Um, so you got to travel like all through Europe playing some golf, like legitimately. How cool is that? And not only were you just playing, like you were making cuts along the way too. Like it's not like you were just throwing a ball around courses. Um, uh, I tell you, what yeah, was it, what was that like? So yeah, playing out in Europe was just it was such an unreal experience. I mean, growing up in Florida, um, grew up mainly close to close to the golf, Tampa Bay area. Moved to Orlando to, to train. The courses that you play in Orlando, a lot of them were just like resort courses. They're flat. Um, you get some wind in Central Florida, uh, if you're familiar with it. A lot of water. But when you go out to Spain or Italy, you're playing some of the tightest golf courses, shorter golf courses as well. But it's a, the priority is is put upon like just managing the golf ball. American golf, a lot of it is you just bomb it. You bomb it, throw a wedge in there, or try to get it as close to the green as possible, get up and down. Out there, you're hitting like sometimes four or five iron just to make just to get in play. If you hit driver, it'll roll out another 50 yards down the hill. Um, so. It was it was really interesting. It was tough at first, you know. It was really tough um, going through uh, Q school for um, a breeding grounds for the uh, the European tour called the Alps Tour. I ended up having to like to go into like an eight man playoff just to secure a spot to be able to get to play and get some exemptions as well to get into play for that year. And I ended up making my eagle putt, um, draining it from like 12 feet to be able to be one of those winners. And it was like probably one of the most high pressure situations I've ever had or experienced. And it was really cool to share that experience with a couple other friends who came over with me to, to, to go through Q school as well. Um, man, it was a lot of fun. Uh, just, just being out there, the food, the culture, the people. I mean, I was making friends with like Seve Ballesteros' son was playing out there on the tour. Um, Miguel Anel Jimenez's son was playing out there on the tour, and obviously it made me feel old. And I'm seeing like these greats and their kids out getting out yeah, there. Yeah, their kids. Playing. Yeah, yeah, you're so playing with cool. their kids. Yeah, uh, that 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 alone was just an unreal experience. Um, we did a lot of our training in Spain, southern Spain. Uh, Marbella, Malaga, they call it the Costa del Sol, it's the Costa del Golf. We have like 80 courses up and down this coast, um, all within a couple hours driving distance. And in the morning, if the fog wasn't there, you could see over the Mediterranean to, uh, to the Atlas Mountains in Morocco in the morning, playing golf alongside it. It looked like, you know, kind of like Bandon Dunes meets mountain course. It's, it's beautiful. But I would highly suggest anybody who's trying to go pro or thinking of going pro, if, if, in the USA options are a little bit tough or more expensive. Definitely get out of the, get out of the country, go to Europe, go Asia. Europe, Europe was a great route. So, so absolutely, that's uh, that's some fantastic advice. And I know I know Malaga very well. So back, uh, I went to Malaga for my 40th birthday, and that was right when uh, COVID hit. Only a couple years and ago. So, right? so yeah, so for myself, we got stuck actually in Spain. I had to get a rescue flight out. The Canadian government had to like bail us out and save us and everything but i remember that so we were actually up in the mountains just north of there and looking over and absolutely you could see the at the Alice range you could see morocco and uh it was something special now your old man's from morocco is he not or did he spend some time there okay so it's funny uh, i mentioned that in uh, in master chef i think that's what you're referring to uh, refer, uh, referring to so uh, my dad worked in Europe um, as an aerospace engineer, and uh, he did make a trip down there. He didn't live there, but he, he, he was able to make a trip oh, down there. Oh, that's um, right. So, yeah, so that yeah, brings yeah, up a good yeah. question. How many lies did you actually tell on MasterChef? <laughs> and you actually, was that the first time you'd put burrata in a meatloaf, yes or no? <laughs> that was definitely the first time I put burrata in a meatloaf. It was. That was literally, that was the first time I made a meatloaf. I had an idea what meatloaf was supposed to be like. I've had it before. It's it's like it's, it's a softer version of like let's say like a, a meatball or whatnot, right? So I knew if I can add some kind of moisture to that mixture somehow, some way that it would begin to be soft, right? And I looked around and nobody else was doing any type of stuffed meatloaf, and I'm like, you know, they have this beautiful burrata, and I don't get my hands in this stuff enough. I might as well try it. And um, man, when Ramsey comes up to you and says, "Are you Francis B?" in my best impression, right? Francis B, 
what are you doing with putting bra in a meatloaf? And, you know, he was like, are you, are you, are you sure this is, this is it? And, you know, obviously he tries to make you second guess. I'm like, yeah, no, I got this. Like, I know what I'm yeah. doing. <laughs> Have you ever done this before? No. <laughs> but it worked. It worked. Uh, it certainly did work, because I do believe you won Best Dish coming out of that round as well. That's exactly it. Um, yeah, I got to... I won that. I was team captain for that next challenge, where we cooked for a bunch of... Whoa. Get in the I hole. I think this might... Get in the hole. Yes! Hey! Yo, do you have a leaderboard for all these uh, people that are coming up on here? I, uh, we will. We will chat start. about it when we okay. get to the end. You know what? Okay. As we get close to the end, I'll tell you what... <laughs> One of the uh, the designers of this game shot, and uh, actually oh, two of them shit. shot the same score, and we'll see if you can beat them. Oh, if I beat it, is it like Willy Wonka, where I get to like go to the yeah yeah studio? You know, like, yeah, hey. yeah. Well, we put you in that glass <laughs> elevator at the end, shoot you to the moon. But um, That's great. Uh, but now that we're on the Master Chef stuff, obviously, like what an experience! Like that must have been crazy. Um, but now. Like cooking wise, like tell me through that journey how you got like were like were you cooking as a teen? Like did, was that like an early twenties thing? What what led you to audition and then like make it onto onto the show? Well, yeah, I mean, I grew up around really good food, and I was lucky enough to have both of my parents like really enjoy food as well, and both love to cook. My mom did a lot of the cooking. My dad would cook um, every so often too. But you know, my my mom's flavor palette came from her mom being uh, a professional cook uh, from the Philippines, working in Hong Kong, you know, sending money back, you know, trying to feed the family, make sure everything's good. As a single mom, uh, my grandma would do that. She passed down a lot of her knowledge to my mom. And then when my mom ended up leaving the Philippines to go to Rome, because, you know, that's kind of how the economy works in the Philippines. A lot of people leave to make better money and send it back, right? So my mom went to Rome to, to work as a nurse, and she ended up learning uh, how to cook there when she was, you know, being a caregiver for some of these these, these people, these really wealthy people in, in, in Rome. And so a lot of her cooking comes with an Italian kind of inspired uh, base. So even if we make chicken adobo at like a traditional Filipino dish, which is usually done with vinegar and soy sauce, she'll add a little bit of red wine, she'll throw like an Italian touch on That's there, cool. and now it's like totally different so i grew up with this fusion of flavors and my dad like loves european food loves german food italian he's he's italian by um by nature <laughs> from new york um so yeah i grew up eating a lot of noodles <laughs> that's i tell you that and some fresh made ones too and that's what i love to do if, I, if i'm able to cook i'll try to try to do that on my own i did that a lot especially during that master chef time uh, big putt there, Birdie. So look at this. We are on the Birdie train three in a row. That's minus five through four. Chateau Whistle. Can you imagine a start like this in the real world? You ever been minus oh, five easy. through four on, on uh, a real course? You know, none, of these, <laughs> none of these short ones. None of these short ones? Yeah. Um, not going to lie. I've, I've had a pretty good run like this in the beginning. Not minus five, though. No. Four through four was, was pretty good. Six through That's eight awesome. was really good. I had that happen once. <laughs> Okay, let's let's, let's see what we can do here. Let's see how close okay. we can get you on this one here, Coach Frankie. So let's go ahead, add full backspin, and then full backspin we're going to have a, okay. Yeah, so let's add full backspin, and then zoom in and oh, have a look okay. down more towards where your target's like. So get out of there. Go back to aim. Go back to aim. Yeah. And then let's uh, zoom in down oh, by where the you. target is, and you can move it around. Yeah, we're going next level. So you might have to add that full backspin back again. Okay, cool. And then, so cool that, yeah. yeah. So then now just keep in mind the direction the wind is blowing. So on this one, 1.4, yay, it's going to move it a little bit, but you're going to be okay. you're gonna be close here. Let's see how close you can get. So as a good Canadian, everyone is well aware of, uh, like, one of the stereotypes of Canada is Tim Hortons donuts, and, and we've got yeah. Timbits, right? So a Timbit is a the inside of a donut. So it's like you've got a donut and then a donut hole, which I do believe you famously made in a donut challenge inadvertently, like a little mini Timbit, and the Canadian in me has never been so proud. It was It was like you were channeling Canada. They are, they that are was staple. that's what I was going for, Joey. That's what I was going yes. for. Yes, you know, I, I've been to Canada a few times, and one of my mom's best friends lives there. 
and we'd visit almost every other summer, um, visit Toronto. Um, and Tim Hortons was like, you had to have it. You had to have it every morning when you're there. And yes, Timbits are amazing. I'd like to say that that was uh, intentional. Um, but when, you know, you got you to make an audible every now and then. My first audible was like, okay, I got I to gotta make a munchkin or a Timbit or something here. Uh, I like the audible where they uh, where you got to replace Leslie as the captain on that one too. Uh, always uh, always good when you got to step up, and there's times in life where you got to do that too. Like we're gonna step up here on this par four and kill it. But yeah. uh, talk about the pressure. So what is the pressure like? When like is it like we all watch these reality shows and it's like oh my god this is scripted they're cutting all the time they're doing whatever. Uh, like you don't have to give away any big secrets, but is the pressure real? Like is it? Like compare, maybe compare it to golf. Like so, you, you hit this twelve footer for uh, to to have that big win, right? Like, what's that like versus as you're walking up to Gordon, Graham, and Joe and handing them their food? Like what? I mean, Joey. I mean, it, it's like these are these are my idols, right? guys that I would watch for four seasons prior to mine. Um, totally, you know, rip into people for any little thing they do. Um, man, I missed the fairway there. I think we're okay though. So if I'm in the rough there, it's okay. Yeah, I'll be okay. You're good. Probably a little topspin out of there. So at the time, I actually felt more pressure over a 12 foot putt to make the cut over a big birdie putt compared to cooking. And I don't know what it is, but I've always been passionate about food and cooking. And I've always felt very confident in how I would cook something skill wise. Hey, we got it on the green here. That that was a fantastic shot. There we go. Um, but yeah, it, as the season goes on and these challenges get more and more intense, like like that challenge with Leslie, I mean, on a beach cooking for a wedding, and this is a real wedding. These are real people getting married, making sure that they're not going to have food that sucks. Oh, oh man, no! Like, I knew it was going to be hard. I saw, Don't worry. Everybody oh. misses one of these putts. I missed a putt Dang. in mine, too. Everybody misses a putt. Don't worry about it. I was overly confident there. But, um, but yeah, when you have like 12 cameras on you at all times, the biggest production I've ever seen, plus you have Joe Bastianich, who's always giving you like the stink face, right? That's how, that's how it always seemed. Corner Ramsey, uh, we had Graham Elliott there too. Um, man, it was just, it was a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah. So like stepping in to try to take charge over a situation that was already going downhill. You know, in my head on that way, like, oh, we're already going to lose this challenge. Do I want to lead a losing team? But do I want to see this team continue going down a very bad path? Like, would they just kind of redeem me for the, for that reason? Knowing we'd probably go into an elimination challenge. I just had to, I had to do something. So, unfortunately, I feel like I should have stepped in a little bit sooner. But, you know, I, I want everybody to have their chance at being a leader, right? I mean... But, and it's we know what yeah, everyone's there for the same thing, and it's, it's one of those yeah. damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? Right, right. At least, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, at least I got some some good clips to look at on YouTube where they did kind of praise a couple of my dishes, which was awesome. Um, at least you don't have the clip of Gordon Ramsay calling my mac and cheese mac and cheese. So that's good. Oh, really? Um, oh, that's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, when he when he's done this, is he like? Hey Francis, hey listen, I'm really sorry. Like uh, it's all for the cameras, or is or is he actually? Do, do you like go to bed that night and like just have visions? He, no, of, of I mean, he Gordon probably Ramsey? he probably thinks they probably they probably think that we go through like therapy or some sort like after every taping to like talk it out with somebody. So no, Ramsey's like, listen, the camera's gonna go on. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be Gordon Ramsay. It can't rise off. You can tell it's a totally ch- a total change in disposition. He's such a caring guy. He cares a lot for everybody who's there. I remember during our season um, in the finals, I believe it was Elizabeth who was in the finals against um, uh, her name's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, Elizabeth's uh, husband um, kind of th- I think he fainted or he fell down a step, and Gordon Ramsay was the first person to come to his aid. You know, just to make sure everything was okay. Not like waiting for the staff or the crew to be there or the medic. He was the first one there. He's always there to make sure everybody's okay. And you can see that, especially with Master Chef Junior. Sometimes I wish he'd be more Master Chef Junior Gordon than Master Chef Gordon. But I'm just glad Cutter Cutter didn't make the final. I'm not a, I'm not on Team Cutter. <laughs> Oh my gosh, man, Cutter! <laughs> I mean, shout out to Cutter. Cutter's a good guy, but jeez, I mean, you got a bad edit, baby. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I could have been more of a character for sure on that show. Um, first time doing something that big, right? Uh, so, yeah, I think if I played a, a bigger version of myself, it probably would have helped uh, with the with the judges a little bit more. I mean, my egg rolls were twice fried, which is when, when okay. Being in Texas now, when is when is tw- frying something twice a bad thing? Like I feel like that's that's like a staple of those <laughs> those things I've seen out here. I believe the term was gloopy. <laughs> Do you have nightmares about the term gloopy now? See, here's the thing, and it w- and I don't. Okay, gloopy might have been the sauce, like maybe a little bit of the sauce, right? I could have just done some <laughs> soy sauce and some you know Thai chilies and called it a day. But uh, yeah, it might have been a sauce a little bit, but you can't be safe, right? Now no. the egg rolls themselves, were I thought were fine. They might not have been uniform, but spring rolls so the the day that i got kicked off for spring rolls obviously it's in the future when everyone's watching this i i made a spring roll workshop uh in orlando just to like redeem that whole fact that i got kicked off for spring rolls when i sold out a, a spring roll workshop class in the local co-op oh and that, that was hilarious fun. people are just asking like why are we signing up for this he, he got kicked off the show for this and i just tried to prove me. to everybody it's like you know what yeah this is my monster i'm gonna tame my monster i'm gonna tame my demon so that yes. was it it was more for me I'm gonna zoom in here, just like you told me that tip, and get yeah. this thing back out to the hole. Add, add some backspin. Back right? We're going to uh, the marshal has just come around and said, "Boys, your pace of play is a little slow." Okay, okay, we gotcha, need gotcha. you to keep up with the group ahead of you. Which I'm not gonna lie, I hear that way too often when I'm golfing <laughs> with the boys. Uh, Sorry, I'll just that, drop this in the hole real quick. Oh, absolutely. That brings up a, a quick question. I was gonna ask you is so. Is recreational golf ruined for you now? Like, can you go out with the boys and just, like, have a couple of pops, have the cart girl come around a few times, and just, like, have a day with the boys at the golf course? Is that... Are you able to do that? It's so tough because for the longest time, every time I'd step foot on a golf course was to try to break the course record or try to do something really good or, like, put everything that I've done to the test. And even now, so, like, when I do play recreationally, it's still, like, a skins game. We're still putting some money on the line because I, I like playing under pressure. It's a lot more fun for me to play with something on the line, whether it's, you know, recording a live, uh, you know, a YouTube video where I'm trying to break the course record or uh, playing with some buddies or my assistants who work with me, assistant coaches, you know, throwing some money around. And I feel like when I do have something to play for, it's, it's more fun for me. It, it is tough to just kind of go out with, let's say, just... I don't know. Just join up a random foursome, and yeah, just not. You know, it's it's different, right? It's it's a little different. But I don't mind. I don't mind that. I play with a lot of my students, and it's a lot of fun, kind of showing them the ropes, and kind of getting better that way. So this is another backspin uh, opportunity, right? Yeah. So most shots in this game, you, you've got the backspin available to you, so it just helps you keep it nice and tight. Now in this situation, so okay, the ball's cool. going to move that. It's going to yeah. move about a ring, a ring and a half. So okay. roughly around what the wind's doing. So you'll be close here. I'm going to guess 8. 8, 12 okay, okay. is my I got guess. 12? I got 4. I'm going to say 4 feet. Let's look at the TV. 8.39 does better than I guessed. So that TV, that's a tiebreaker score. So that's what we give you a tiebreaker score on every hole. And it's okay. 1 inch. Every 1 inch a miss is subtracted from the number 900. So there you had 61 inches of miss, which is, uh, you'll be happy with on any par three that you're shooting in the real world. That's for sure. (laughs) That's for sure. Um, The last question I had, MasterChef question is, man, you're down, you and Cutter, down to the final two, and they go, Cutter, you're leaving. Pregnant pause, pregnant pause, pregnant pause. The floor and returning upstairs. I was like, are you kidding me? Really? That's how it happens? Now, the, yeah. the, they flash on your face there. Did they get you? Like, was that a one take? Did they get you for half a second going, all right, I'm in. I made it. See you, Cutter. And then, yeah. you sons of... Ugh. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, it was... You know, when you're out there filming, and, you know, obviously, when you're on a reality show, there's a lot of rules, and you can't bring your laptop, you can't bring your phone, you're away from your family, away from you know, all the people... All the, all the people you love and it's it's for an extended period of time longer than most and it's you're always waking up really early you're always you know filming really late so i think maybe a little bit of the pressure but maybe just a little bit of just kind of like just being there and always having to be like that kind of got to me at that point um 
probably didn't have my head all in it in that challenge. Uh, man, I, I would have loved to just stay that one extra challenge. I think they did, um, they, they cut down a whole salmon that next challenge, the next episode, and that's like, I'm so good with that stuff. I was like, man, I just had that chance. Never fails, eh? <laughs> All right, let's get in on this. We're gonna knock this pretty close here. Yeah, let's do this. Get one close again. Yeah, first thing ever. Just throw a bunch of backspin on there. Try and keep it close. And we'll keep these birdie putts, the occasional eagle putt around. See if we can throw up a decent score. Um, so you talk about filming videos and setting course records and whatnot. I watched a fun one you did with the random golf club. The uh, could an amateur break ninety where you got a chance to caddy around, going around uh, Brookline there. Um, have you had a chance yourself to play something at U.S. Open quality level like that? Super deep rough, those greens, nice putt by the way. Those greens that are crazy fast. Uh, so when they're like when you were playing over in Europe and that like. Were they to that condition? Like, what was the what was the difference? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We got to play a lot of amazing golf courses out in Europe, and they were always in pristine condition. Um, it was during the winter time, so you know the grass wouldn't really grow out too long, and they kept in awesome condition. So we're playing on like stint twelve, thirteen, which is on par with what you see on tour. Yeah, that's quite. Um, and these are undulating greens. So, yeah, and I got a chance to, when I played with, uh, when I did the caddy, uh, caddy video with, with Eric Andrews Lang for Random Golf Club, that was a lot of fun, by the way, just being at Brookline, um, being at the country club, the first country club ever to be a country club in the U.S., and you're, sh you're walking on hallowed grounds up there. It's so historic. Oh, there's, yeah. Uh, there's these multiple facilities and buildings that are all around. It looks like you're walking through, like, a, um, just, like, a colonial town village. It's not just a, a shop right and there's all these pictures of francis we met and i was telling eric like there's big francis energy out here today man i'm pulling for you you know if anybody's gonna be on the back it's gotta be a guy named francis at you know the country club where you know he won as an amateur uh beat here uh, henry barden right so oh man those greens were, were tough the course itself was tough I, I, how it looks on tv is nothing like what it's actually like in, in real life it, it was it was just rustic, but everything was grown out. It was really really hard. If you're at the ball in the rough, man, just forget about it. You're gone. Yeah, I did fairways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we we snuckily went through the turn there, and I I have a habit of asking people. So, at the turn, are you a hot dog? Have a snack kind of guy? <laughs> Maybe have a beer if you're if you're not playing competitively, or are you? Uh, I just want to get to ten and and get going. No man, I'm a I'm a snacker. I'm a snacker. I need to eat something. So whether it's a sandwich I bring or you know, I try to keep it healthy. I mean, turn dogs are always great. Here in Austin, there's turn tacos. And oh there's, really? There's, there's always there's always like you know the the local golf course will usually have like some good brisket tacos or some traditional um, Tex-Mex tacos out there, and uh, yeah, it's it's refreshing. Get there, get there. Oh, Are you kidding me? no! What? Never leave a putt short. Oh, 90% of the time it, it doesn't go in. Speaking of quick greens, apparently this one isn't. Yeah, that must have been way uphill. Well, you know, you got a par at least maybe like once a nine. The rest of these are birdies. Keeps it human. Um. <laughs> All right, Francis, hole 11 now after the missed putt. A chance to totally redeem yourself here. Drive a par four. Is there is there anything better in golf than when you see that, that like, medium-range, short-range par four, and it's go time? It's like, all right, come Dude, out of your yeah. shoes. Let's go. It's like it's it's like Christmas came early, you know? You just got to go after it. And I love the Dumb and Dumber reference, by the way. One of my favorite movies, if not my favorite movie. Oh, uh, absolutely. So just come out of your shoes here. Full overpower. Pull, keep pulling it back. Oh, you had more power, but there that's fine. We'll get there. Yeah. I put the top spin out there. Get up there. Okay. Okay. Get up there. All right. We're right. green side. Should All right. Be good. We'll take it. We'll take it. So you leave Europe, finish that tour, come back to the States. You get the big move to Texas. And decide to go down the coaching path which i admire so much coaching is is such a rewarding experience you're obviously very good at it um perhaps you could talk about that fancy logo you got on your good looking hat there 
and uh, a little bit about what you're doing now as a coach and and what that's what the, what that feels like. I mean, I love coaching; it's so rewarding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's always been the plan, eh? So, like, ever since I started, I remember being in high school and volunteering for the police athletic league locally in Clearwater, Florida, and um, you know, playing golf as a high schooler, playing, trying to get competitively, more competitively, and also coaching at the same time. It just, I, I felt equally as it felt equally as rewarding or even more so when i'm teaching somebody and i always thought to myself you know one day it'd be really nice to climb up the ranks in pro golf of course that's always the dream that's like the 0.01 percent of golfers that get to do that right i know it's tough but just to go out there and live a little bit of that so i can bring it back because you're around so many you're around some of the best coaches in the world when you get to that level you have access to these coaches access to, to practicing at amazing tour quality golf courses so you're living this life of putting it all in the line for golf and i decided to do the same thing in coaching to where i can now take what i just learned from all of my coaches and all the people that i get to be around and bring that to hopefully a lot of the juniors um and give them something that i never got to have and nowadays with the technology that's out there just from the stuff you can watch on your phone, um, but also kind of give them a team. So when I started Beyond Golf Performance, I always thought, you know, it's it's about more than golf. It's about ha- who you are on the course, equally as, as as much as like who you are off the course. So if you can if you can make you a better player physically, talking about golf fitness, um, nutrition, if you can make you a better player mentally, maybe you can take some of these mental techniques, self, you know, self, uh, like just kind of being self-aware, um, take that off the golf course. So these young kids that are starting to play have a better reason to practice every day. It's not just about, okay, I want to make birdies, but I just want to be a better person. And that's kind of our, like, you can call it a holistic approach to, to training with us. Um, you pay to be a part of a team and you get it mental health trainer you get a fitness trainer you get me as a swing coach and we all share in that so everybody who comes in gets into our programs has the ability to have access to everything that a lot of the stuff that maybe you know poor guys get to have access to on that level that is super cool and you're absolutely correct i've got i've got a couple kids that play some high level sports of course it's canada so it's hockey but uh, yeah, it's not just about your performance on the field or on the ice or anything. And we saw a huge shift in this. Probably started like 15, 20 years ago um, in golf terms. Nice pro shot, by the way. Um, like Tiger was really Thank one you. of the first to, to bring in like the whole physical fitness aspect to it. And I know in, in hockey, you saw a lot of their working with goaltenders was a lot of the mental aspect and, and mental preparedness. And, and it's so important. Like if you're late for a round and you, and you run up and you, you're doing your shoes up in the cart on the first tee and, and you were you just got in a fight with your girlfriend and you and some jackass was yelling at you on the way there, you know you're going bogey, bogey, bogey to start, right? But you get there 45 minutes early, you get a nice warm up in, you say hi to your buddies, you had a nice breakfast, you worked out the night before, you're not hung over, you, you go birdie, 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 right? Like it's 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 just so important that aspect. Uh, it, and, it is, and, and it's just... funny you brought that up because, like, I'm oh, sorry to cut you off, but you, you no, brought no, up a, a, a point because you know, everybody has their own process. Everybody is, is different off the course. So you want to try to be, and this is something I've learned, you want to try to be who you are off the course when you get to that tournament or you get to that round with your buddies. If you are that guy who shows up late and, you know, chugs a beer before the round or whatnot or, like, kind of downs that egg McMuffin sandwich, which, I mean, we've all done that. It's not, those are amazing. They're so tasty. Hey, but uh, don't hit has, your shot yet. Keep telling you your go. story, but okay. don't hit your shot yet because we're going to use one. Okay. We're going to use one of these pins to help you on this one. Okay, anyway. gotcha. Um, yeah, it's good to be who you are off the course. So, like, I've played in tournaments, especially in Europe, where there's like, I remember this one top Irish player. He made the cut. I missed it. We're all at, at the clubhouse having a beer. He's there till like three o'clock in the morning, and they didn't shut it down on him. And I'm like, dude, is, aren't you teeing off at like eight o'clock the next morning? I'm like, yeah, man, I, I do this all the time. I got it. And this is the person who he is off the course. And he goes out there, shoots a, like a 64 or something like that. And that's just, you know, who he is. And that's his process. You no, know, Miguel Hanna Jimenez, another European golfer, he'd have like a, he does his cigar in the, in the, in the routine, right? On the driver, his cigar, he's doing his, his stretches. And then he takes like a little glass of sherry and he drinks that before his round. And Perfect. now he's all, yeah, I guess there's a, there, there are levels that everyone yeah, has yeah. to get to. You know, all right, to get so let's, to, let's go into your, hit the ball in the bottom left and then hit pins. Okay. Swap pin. Swap pin, got it. All right, so hit swap pin, and we're going to add a distance pin. So swipe over a little bit, and we're going to 
So this is going to boost. So there. So he, yeah, so Slip this one. Ball, pin, or ball pins, all stats. You can pick that one. All right, so we've got you with the ball spin, all stats. Now you're going to look. If you move that target up a bit, you're going to see you just gained a pile of yards. So try oh, and move geez, that, right on. Move that closer. Yeah. Look at this. So you just gained... Okay. It's like the equivalent of having a Red Bull just before the uh, at the turn, and now on ten Perfect. you're a little amped up, ready to shoot. Got yeah. a little top spin there, or you're good with whatever you got. And now if you pull all the way back, you're gonna give you a little boost in power. Oh, I want. gotcha. Yeah, there we go. Makes the needle just a little quicker. I gotcha. A little push, a little push out to the right, but that's fine. Oh, sand. Okay. Let's see how your sand game is. Okay. So typically, you want to open your stance a little bit to the left in your righty, and keep the face all open. But here, I'm just gonna add maybe a little backswing. It's a lot easier. So I want to add a, a pin, a real life pin. That would be uh, slightly amazing. Okay, here we go. So this is just all gonna come down to can you time this needle to stop it at the top? The good ball might help the great shot. Come on, baby! Yes, up and down, out of the yeah. sand. That is That's an it. eagle. Your second drop, we call it. Look at that. He goes eagle on eleven, decent birdie on twelve, eagle on thirteen. All it took was that missed putt on ten to change your luck. Look at this. Eagle, it's not birdie, bad. It's eagle, not bad. not bad through 13, minus 15, through 13, here at Chateau Whistler. You're here with Francis Biotti, Coach Frankie. Now tell us a little bit about your golf program in terms of the online aspect. I saw this. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. Living in 2023 is so amazing. I can tell my car to play me a song, and it does, and I can also get a golf lesson from a guy in Texas, right? Is this how this works? That's for sure. Yeah, yeah that's how it works. It's uh, it's amazing. Technology now is, is unreal. So uh, one of my assistants actually built us out an app that we first used to keep in touch with all of our students um, when they're on the road to travel. And I've always envisioned that as a team to have like the virtual aspect uh, to back you up. Now... It evolved into partnering with another app called OnForm, which is one of the top virtual coaching apps out there for a lot of sports, not just golf. And they have a really streamlined design with them. And I use this to be able to now teach anybody anywhere in the world. So anybody can upload a swing. And we have a free starter called the Beyond Golf Online Academy. I have a link to it on my website at beyondgolfperformance.com. And we give everybody one free swing analysis. So it's a, it's a live real-time swing analysis um, and people can actually upload their swings too and we'll do a voiceover so Joey if you want to you could send me your swing down the line or face on just like you see on on YouTube when the people oh, I'm it doing up. this I'm a hundred percent doing this dude I, and I could tell you exactly what you're doing or exactly what kind of a drill you need to do and I'll voice over it give you all the details you need and as long as you have let's say one hour a week or maybe you know 30 minutes to, to be able to practice it you can get better you don't have to go to a golf course all the time you don't have to spend 20 bucks for a bucket of balls every time you go play just to do this so get in the hole yes did i just put did that just happen uh yeah we happened? are back to back eagles that's three out of four batting 750 in the last four holes okay i gotta go play this it's pretty easy yeah no kidding <laughs> Uh, so that is super cool. That sounds awesome. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm not even kidding. I'm 100% going to do this. <laughs> well, well, Joey, get this. So I, I, I made a video on it, too, because one of my students, one of my first virtual students who lives in Nashville, um, you know, three-hour flight away from Austin, different time zone, got on this because he saw one of the videos I did with Eric Anders Lang at Random Golf Club, and he's like, oh, this guy, you know, he said he can break 80 at, from the tips at ACC at Austin Country Club. Like, let me see if I can take a lesson. What, like, who is this guy? So we got on our online program. I worked with him for about four months. He was, I believe, a 15 handicap. And then after about three months, actually two and a half months, um, he dropped down to about a five. Oh, wow. And he was just playing constantly at all this time on his hands to go practice. And we would have about two or two live lessons a week um, where I sat cool. on the phone 45 minutes. We did it all. 
man, it was it was unreal. He came to visit me in Austin with with his wife. Uh, I got to take him out to some great golf courses, uh, just to treat him a um, little bit to uh, to be out here and make a trip just to see me and work with me. And uh, now he's now he's a friend. He's like, man, next time you're out in Nashville, let me let me take you out to some nice golf courses out here. So it's just cool to know that I can help somebody and they don't have to be right here in front of me. And that's what technology can do now, right? That is, it is so cool. Um, speaking of Texas golf courses, featured in Ultimate Golf is what it has been, the number one golf course in Texas for the last, I can't remember what it was, nine or 10 years, Whispering Pines is mm. featured in Ultimate Golf. It is. A, a uh, super fun course to play. It plays short in the game, so we see a lot of really, really good scores. But uh, it's one of our Texas courses featured in Ultimate Golf. I haven't, I haven't played it yet. I might have to play it uh, on Ultimate Golf first and then just get ready and then go play it in real life. And then go destroy it. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, so Ultimate Golf and Coach Frankie do have a person in common. We have that six degrees. It's actually only one degree of Kevin Bacon. And this person is Rob wriggle you left another one short frankie <laughs> it's for the drama so yeah it makes for good tv we'll do we'll do take two we'll edit it after me um so rob wriggle we had play in the game uh a while ago he uh played a, a special kind of like really? what we're doing here and no way. you were also on a show hosted by rob wriggle <laughs> holy moly which for those of you that don't know go on youtube go look it up it's a ton of fun it's basically like mini putt on steroids. It is is yeah. the ultimate mini putt, uh, which, by the way, on Ultimate Golf we do have a brand new ultimate putt, uh, ultimate mini golf game for you to go and try. But how much fun was that? Like, what that was? Obviously, I think the Master Chef side of it probably helped you to get in the door, and the golf side of it obviously doesn't hurt. Uh, how much fun was that though? It looked like a riot. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, and I, I knew a couple people that got on the show for the previous seasons, and I was like, dude, how did you do? Like, how did you even get on this? And one of my friends, um, Clay Myers, shout out to Clay. He's a Class A pro at, at uh, the new golf course in West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, he got all the way to the finals, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so he was really close at, at getting that check. Um, he loved it. He had a, he had such a fun time. Um, I saw that they were. We were requesting people to sign up for it, so I signed up for it. And uh, man, the experience was—you can't even—you can't get prepared for this. It's, no, no, it's a—it's a, it's a mental game, man. It's—it's it's more mental than anything. Everybody's on the same playing field. If you're a pro, if you're not a pro, if you're just like if if you're anybody who just enjoys golf, um, you have a chance to 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 be their best that pro. And um, spoiler alert, yeah, that's definitely what happened. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it was it was the the one hole that I was like, okay, I don't. It would be really cool to not play this hole. Was the hole that I ended up getting, uh, which is uh, they call it hole number two, where you have to run across a series of porta potties with yeah. characters inside, and you got to make it. You got to sprint like sixty feet in like I don't know, like 20, 15 seconds or something. Like that. Less than that, less than that. But it was. Uh, I, I thought I had it, man. I was running for my life. I was like, I was timing it well. I thought I had it. When I watched it on TV, I was like, man, I got really slow. <laughs> I thought it was a lot faster than that. <laughs> oh, dude, it was so much fun. Um, especially when it's 30 degrees out in March in LA and uh, you go into water. It's the That's the best feeling ever. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Yeah, that's probably not very... Uh, it wakes you up. It wakes not you very up. fun. Now, I heard you tell a fantastic... Well, you kind of alluded to this story, and it, it, it's such a cool, cool story. I need you to tell me about when you went out west and had the opportunity to work next to where Harry Houdini lived. <laughs> um, yeah. The fact yeah. is such a cool story. Here's the part, my yeah. my favorite part of it is, is so he'll tell the story in a second, but the, the cool notes are... Renting a large house, like a mansion, is cheaper than office space. <laughs> it, it, right? Like, it, we're not even kidding. Yeah, so it was uh, one of my best friends um, I grew up with. He ended up working for a, uh, an app company. And this was the time, during that, during that time, a lot of app companies would actually go rent these huge houses somewhere 
especially if they're based out in LA, instead of going to rent office space somewhere because it was actually a lot cheaper to live where you work. And their work was a lot of app developing, so they could do it at home somewhere indoors. So when I went out there to play a tournament with another one of my really good friends, um, we ended up crashing at my friend's house. And it was, you, know, you woke up and you're looking over like Laurel Canyon and find out that you know two houses down is where Harry Houdini used to live and we yes. have like all of these like singers and actress, uh, actors actresses all living in these houses around and it, it felt like I woke up in a music video like it didn't feel real <laughs> it was and then they threw a party later on with all these like other app developers and, and music related people and big DJs because they're all their clientele and a lot of the people they partner with were DJs and uh, <laughs> it was it was crazy it was it was a lot of fun um played played all right but uh man just staying there was was beautiful i, I do enjoy such a good LA story a lot. it's yeah. such a cool story now music videos i do believe you did have a chance to uh what was it you cooked for little machine gun kelly one time did you not oh, how, uh, <laughs> i saw that how, yeah so how, again that's that's the same friend so um we uh He's, he, he has a, another business where he promotes a lot of um, big electronic acts that come in through Florida. And at the time, it was doing a lot of stuff in Orlando, and he ended up booking Machine Gun Kelly. Not an electronic act, but one of the first um, non-electronic uh, acts, I guess you can say. Um, did a lot of hip-hop artists, but I was just coming off MasterChef, and I loved cooking. And one of my ideas was like, let me get in the green room. Let me let me cook everybody a version of spring rolls with a filling that I think they would enjoy. So I did some spring rolls. Machine Gun Kelly loves Asian food i did not know that i ended up taking a picture with him at the in the green room where he's like yo man right after the show i'm just gonna i'm just gonna stuff my face with these spring rolls bro thank you so much and he was just so appreciative such a nice guy too cool. and he's super tall right oh he's so tall tall super yeah. skinny i mean he's just got a big personality too um but he was really appreciative of us cooking for him and then i did it with currency another hip-hop artist uh cool a few other names um kendrick lamar and his team i mean yeah it was pretty cool like i was just catering green rooms with spring rolls the thing that got kicked me off uh it kicked off for yeah yeah the sweet sweet uh, revenge of the string roll all right, minus 20 through 17. We're looking at a minus 22. If you can manage to eagle okay. this, I got faith in you. Okay. You're going to do it. As we're on our last hole here, I want to talk about Beyond Golf Talk. So a brand okay. new, not brand new, let's say a couple month old endeavor that uh, Coach yeah. Frankie has taken on here, doing some podcasts, uh, mostly like golf related. Uh, I've listened to a pilot, like fantastic job, man. What? Uh, yeah. Well, what got you into podcasting? Like, were you a podcast fan before this? Like, you do such a good job of it. You can tell you've listened to a ton of them. Well, what, what well, got I, you out there? I appreciate that. Well, you know, I I want to network with as many people as I can in the golf space, and not just golf instructors or you know pros, but also just people who are making a difference in the culture of golf and the outlook of the future of golf and the inclusivity of golf. So my angle, and I talk with one of my good friends, Matthew, about there. He's he's just did it. That's his. That's his yep. uh, persona. He's the uh, co-host of the of the um, of Beyond Golf Talk. We were talking about bringing in these like fashion icons or people that are changing culture in golf, and that's what we got started with. And it's just it's been cool to network with all these people all around the world, around the country, and be able to one day say, okay, let's let's meet up, let's do something more in person. So this is just like our way of reaching out, creating more of a community. Um, allowing viewers that are golf fans or culture related fans uh to see what's happening out there in the golf space because it's just so interesting i mean look dj khaled is out there golfing right we got all these football players nba players everyone's golfing um it's just it's always going to be something that people are going to want to do and um the space is changing man changing for the better it, it, absolutely and and even here on this golf game that we've got a mobile golf game ultimate golf we, we have like a huge community and we have these things called country clubs so the groups of 50 uh that we join and it's like a it's no different than your like uh uh team right and and we compete together and these people are genuinely some of my best friends right now because i've spent the last two or three years playing and talking to these guys and and so you don't even have to play real world golf to be part of the golf community. You can even play a mobile golf game such as Ultimate Golf and be part of the golf community. Look at this. He finishes with an eagle. That is a minus 22 for Coach Frankie. Frankie Freewood. 
Francis Biotti, thank you so much for joining us. Um, the floor is yours, man. Plug away. Tell us what you got going on. What's what's the next big endeavor, Coach? Joey, thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on here. Um, for anybody looking for a swing tip or some personal instruction online, virtually, you can go to beyondgolfperformance.com. Check out our socials, Beyond Golf Performance, on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. Um, we tweet a little bit, not too much. Or what is it? Do we say we X? Is it X now? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, X. But uh, yeah, yeah, I'd love to do another one of these in the future. Maybe I'll be invited back, but I'm definitely going to keep playing. So if anyone's out there that wants to play head to head, I'm Frankie Three Wood on here. Um, definitely take a listen to Beyond Golf Talk um, anywhere where podcasts are listened to. Right on, man. Honestly, this was so much fun. I'm going to send you my swing, and then uh, you know what? I might even post the analysis for people to make fun of me. But all right, thank you, everyone. I am Duff. This has been another Ultimate Golf VIP tournament, and it was a good one. We'll see you out there.